Hello. So today we have a solution to the dining philosophers problem. Here is the running code. Um, well, so you can compile it using this command, and then you can run that with this. It'll initialize five philosophers. They're either thinking, eating, or hungry, which is explicit, uh, implicit, or they're dead. And um, basically, they'll become hungry, and if they're hungry, the number will increase, and then they uh, will choose a fork. Um, but let me give some exp exposition to what the dining philosopher's problem is. It's a problem um, related to synchronization. So there's a group of philosophers who are sitting around a table and have only one fork each to eat with. Uh, the philosophers can spend their time thinking or eating, but they can only eat if they have both forks. Now, the goal of the problem is to avoid a deadlock where all philosophers are holding one fork and waiting for the other fork to be released. The code right here implements the solution to the dining philosopher's problem using locks and condition variables. Over here we have some includes, standard namespace, and we have some constants over here. If the philosopher gets to a hunger of 10, which it never does, well, it will die. There's five philosophers. Minimum hunger level is zero. In our class declaration, we have the various things that the philosopher is capable of doing. Thinking, eating, increasing or decreasing hunger, and checking if they're dead. You can also get their ID and state. So the program starts by essentially uh, creating threads for each philosopher and initializing them with a state of thinking and a hunger level of zero. So the main function basically checks this loop, uh, enters this loop that checks if any of them are still alive, basically if they're not dead. And if at least one philosopher is still alive, then it will display the current state and hunger level of each philosopher. After printing out the status, we sleep for two seconds, and then, um, so, and then we join the threads and delete the philosophers. Um, if, you know, they're dead and such, um, so the main function is philosopher lifecycle, and it basically defines the behavior of each philosopher. So it runs in a loop and starts by making the philosopher think for a random amount of time. And then the philosopher tries to pick up both forks represented by two adjacent mutex locks using a unique lock object. If the philosopher is unable to acquire both locks, both forks, then they release any locks they have acquired and go back to thinking. If they are, una if they are able to acquire both locks, they set their state to eating and eat for a random amount of time. So after eating, they decrease their hunger level and release both locks. The program uses locks to ensure that only one philosopher is holding a fork at any given time. And um, the condition variables are used to ensure that a philosopher will wait if they cannot acquire both forks. 
by using this unique lock object, we avoid deadlocks by ensuring that the philosopher release any locks they hold before going back to thinking. The display status creates a string that it displays and constantly updates over here with the ID, state, and hunger values. We convert states to strings using this function. Here are the various um, setters and getters for the philosopher. Here we increase the philosopher's hunger level if it's less than the max hunger. Otherwise, the state becomes dead. This function decreases the philosopher's hunger level. And this one checks if it's dead. Here is the constructor, the ID, state, and the hunger, which we initialize with the minimum. And we start off with the philosopher thinking. So we also have a get ID over here. And so I told earlier about this function that allows for it to actually um, compile and this one runs the program. Um, so some interesting things about the Dining Philosopher's uh, problem is uh, actually um, uh, Jigstra in the 1960s um, he uh, he was one of the uh, persons that had a uh, contribution to this problem. This problem is a general problem uh, related to uh, synchronous concurrent programs that are executing multiple tasks simultaneously. So Jigstra worked on a number of synchronization techniques that allowed for the coordination of the actions of concurrent processes, including semaphores and monitors. Um, so this is a way to essentially control the consumption of distributed processes, the amount of resource allocation um, in a limited resource constrained scenario. And we have a resource, which is the amount of forks and we have consumers, which are processes such as the philosophers. So this effectively prevents the situation from getting too dire. And um, this can run indefinitely without any of the um, philosophers dying or the processes from starving. If we check my task manager, we see a lot of processes, and all of them are given resources. When you have some kind of distributed system or some kind of set of concurrent threads, well, you need to allocate resources effectively. So for example, memory could stand in for the amount of hunger. If this goes to the max memory, well, the computer will crash. Um, you could also think of it as if you have the opposite, where there's very little resources um, that are on the um, process, it will starve and it will have a bottleneck. So in order to distribute resources effectively, well, we have the ability for concurrent consumption um, mediated by some um, essentially um, a set of locks that prevent the um, deadlock phenomena. Uh, deadlock is when basically all of them have one fork, but neither none of them can eat. So that, that would be if like a program on your computer um, was... Um, trying to access a resource that another one was at trying to access, but none of them can access enough to actually do their actions. Alright, thanks for watching.